Let's all stand to our feet this wonderful morning and say he's my king. Come on, tell your neighbor he's my king. That's it right there. You know, that, that, that video never gets old. We've been playing that video for so long. It just, it stirs us up. Hallelujah. I mean, it's like a crescendo that just takes place in your life. Just, it just gets, it gets, it starts small and then it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Come on. You know, that's how we all started in our Christian walk. You know, we got saved, right? We, we said yes to Jesus. We still stumbled over some habits and, you know, things that we were doing as an old fleshly individual. But God, amen. And his faithfulness helped us cross over some of those areas. And he's continuing to help us as we go throughout our life and stumble through the journey. Come on. So he's my king. Why don't you say that right now? He's my king. Come on. He's not just my, he's, he's your king. Say it like he's yours. He's my king. Come on. My king. So he's king over, you know, my poverty. He became king. Therefore, I am now under the kingship. So no longer do I live in poverty. Come on. But I live in the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, he's king over my sickness. Well, I was sick. I was bound for disease but because of his stripes he became my king I'm no longer a sick person it's no longer my pain come on it's no longer my disease come on oh but I've given it to him and he is my savior he is my Rafa my healer come on so see he's my king so I know many of you have come today it's a special special day because it's the day of the Lord. It's the first day of the week. It's the day that we come as a church congregation to his house to offer up our sacrifices of praise. Amen. The Bible says, and I want to read a scripture before we begin our praise, and it's found in Psalm 150. You're going to love this psalm. It's the last book in the book of Psalm. Praise the Lord. Praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and the harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Look how God instructs us to praise. He says, praise Him where? In the sanctuary. We are to be praising Him here in church. He says, praise Him in His mighty firmament. All the atmosphere, we ought to be praising Him because He is good. Praise Him for His mighty acts. What He's done. Come on. Praise Him according to His excellent. There is no flaw in Jesus. We are to praise Him because He is excellent in everything. Praise Him with the trumpet. I don't know any quiet trumpet player. Come on, Bree. Trumpets are not made to be muzzled, even though you have a, what is it called? A, a mute. But they're really not meant to, they're meant to shout out loud. They're meant to proclaim and declare when He comes back, there's going to be a sound like a trumpet. Come on. And the Bible says every ear will hear, every eye will see, and every knee will bow. So he starts out how when we praise God with a blast. You know what happens when something happens? When you heard the thunder yesterday, what did you do? I, I, right? I went outside, checked my dogs. Hi, tan vivos. You know, are they okay? Come on. You, you, you. When there's a blast, it awakens something in you. Come on. When we start to praise, uh, there's a blast, uh, and it awakens the spirit. 
Hallelujah. Come on. Because who knows, there might be a, a person next to you that may be sleeping. And your blast of praise gives in the glory. Come on. Listen to this. I know I'm taking my time, but I'm teaching you about some praise. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Now, I don't play the harp, but I know that harp needs to be mic'd in order for us to hear it. So when we praise God, not only do we praise Him with a loud shout, but we're also tender. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise Him with the timbrel and the dance. Hallelujah. Come on. Just move a little bit. Just right there where you are. Come on. Come on. I'm not asking too much of you. Praise Him. What is He saying? When you praise Him, He wants you to move. Hallelujah. Come on. He wants you to get out of and just move. Come on, praise Him. Let's move a little bit. Come on. Here we go. Here we go.
sing your kingdom come Lord your kingdom come your will be done your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven on earth as it is in heaven your kingdom come your will be done your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven on earth as it is in heaven
listen, who's on our mind today? Jesus. Jesus. Come on. He is to be glorified. Amen. Amen. Now, now I saw Sister Maria almost up here dancing. Come on. Amen. She Amen. just had surgery Friday. Amen. Sister, you ought to be home. You ought to be having your feet propped up and having Reuben just serve you. But you chose to come to the house of God to bless his holy name. Come on. Amen. Because he is your healer. Come on. Amen. Now, Carla, it's your birthday. You ought to be planning a Sunday with a Sunday chocolate drizzle. You ought to be having a pedicure and a manicure somewhere in the Gulf Beach of the Sahara Desert. But you woke up and you said, no, I'm coming to church. God's going to bless you for choosing that. Bree, you, 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 you were just on a trip. Now, you were on a vacation. You flew to California, and you had some great time with the seniors, and y'all got back late. How late did y'all get back? Yeah, I mean, they got back around midnight, plus unpacking and getting ready. You talk about 2 o'clock in the morning. You should be asleep. You should be thanking God for safe travels. But you said, nope, I'm awake. I thank the Lord for my travels. I'm coming to church because he's a good God. Come on. You can only do that if Jesus, come on. We're going to get this song in you. Because I want you, I want you when you go to work, I want you to have Jesus on your mind. So when something happens, you know, some, some, when it happens at work, and because you got Jesus on your mind, come on, you, you begin to do what Jesus did. Hallelujah. You begin to act as Jesus says in the word to act as he will. Hallelujah. So we're going to sing that song one more time. I see some new visitors in the house. Praise the Lord. I need our church leaders, our men's ministry, and our women's ministry. Go greet 15 people, tell them we love you, and welcome to the house of God. Here we go. Jesus, 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 got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 got him on my mind. I got Jesus. to trust him he always brings me out he is always with me he is always on time that's why i want the world to know i got jesus on my
my, my, my. And songs like that, just all the songs, praise the Lord. Just praising the Lord gets you moving, amen? amen. Now, we got this, you know, thing going around, and, 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 and it's everybody wanting to, you know, walk steps, and everything just, uh, I want to reach 2,000 steps a day, you know. 2,000 steps is this, 4,000 is this, 10,000, you know, it's four miles. I mean, any steps, you know, any steps, you know, praise the Lord. And, oh, yeah, I'm going to look good. But when it comes to the house of God, God don't count your claps, he counts your steps. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. I looked at my pedometer right now, Miss Kim, and just in that song alone, I took a thousand steps. Wow. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I know those steps have been ordained by the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Woo. Hallelujah. Come to church. He's coming to Holy Ghost Gym. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. Y'all may be seated in the house of the Lord. Shake the hand of the person next to you and say, God bless you. Thank you, praise him. Y'all can also be seated among the congregation. Wow. We, we are just in love with the Lord. Amen. Pastor Kim, why don't you come on up here? You, you want to do something very special. And so that's a blessing. Hallelujah. But you look pretty in blue. What a blessing. Amen and amen. Give Pastor Kim a great hand clap. Thank you. Glory, glory. Thank you, Pastor Mark. Um, I do want to do something special real quick, but let me give a couple of announcements. Um, next Sunday, we'll be honoring our veterans. So if you're a veteran, please join us or if you know somebody. And also, also we will have a um, special missions offering, uh, Missions May. So um, uh, plan on giving a, a seed for that. And then um, we'll be praying over all of our seniors next Sunday. Can you believe it's already time for graduation? So um, we have five seniors, um, including um, Lalo, Johnny's son. We, we honor Johnny and Denise, who are, where, who are with us, and we honor their son as well. So we'll be honoring him as well, whether he's here or not, but we want to bless him. So all of our seniors, and then we have a couple graduating college, so that's exciting. And then today we have Las Palmas at 3 o'clock, if you can join us there at the nursing home. And then Brother Freddie is holding, uh, hosting a men's Bible study today at 7 o'clock. And they've been anointed, so y'all come, uh, men that can come, and we're gonna, they're going to have a wonderful time. Amen. Well, what I wanted to do today is uh, we wanted to pray over uh, baby Evan. He's going to be a year old tomorrow, and uh, he's a miracle baby. Lizzie, bring him up here. Eloy, come on up here. Or Eloy, if you want to just go grab Evan. Um, I was trying to get a hold of my sister, but they're probably doing something. You know, uh, Tiff's been fighting, fighting a disease that doesn't belong to her for a year now. So um, we've been getting some miracle reports. But, you know, I think... Um, we wanted to do something special for Tiff, and tomorrow is the baby's birthday, so we're all going to go down there. So if you have it on your heart, maybe to write her an, uh, a, a card or send the baby with something off tomorrow, um, we just want to surprise her and send her the church's love because I know that she absolutely appreciates how much everybody <laughs> loves this little boy, you know. Um, he, this right, I look at him, that's Nana's baby. That's what I say, you know. I just, I love him so much. But right now, more than anything, his mama needs to be home. And we're believing that she's going to come home. Um, she's doing so good that um, she's able to be off the ventilator now. Before, she couldn't even take it off. Now she sleeps without it. She's breathing on her own. She's not needing that thing. She took a nap yesterday, and she woke up, and they had that thing on her. She didn't even want it on her. So, you know, before they were saying she would have to stay on it, and that's not what's happening. So we know that this family is blessed. God has a call on their family, and we just want to all gather together and pray for this family. I know Pastor Mark wanted to share, but... We love our baby. And speaking of babies, we got Cristal that had her new baby. And Michael, he was 
the baby was eight pounds, 11 ounces, beautiful, beautiful baby. And so I got to visit with them for a little bit. And I see JJ and Melly back there. And we're praying for y'all because Crystal got a new baby, but then their grandbaby left out of state. Um, uh, their daughter went out of state with their husband. So I know it's hard to sometimes let go of our babies, but God knows. So we're praying that God has his hand on their family as they had to say bye-bye for a little while, but they'll be coming back. Amen. So Pastor Mark, come bless well, baby Evan. It's a blessing. And we have uh, Carla who's with child. Yes. And so she's she's due to to have baby in August in August in August as the Lord would we will praise the Lord amen no and anybody else with child anybody thank you Jesus some say no thank you Jesus hallelujah <laughs> well we just want to make sure everybody is loved and and honored you know um, uh, when we see this little boy we see the grace of God Because my wife and I, along with other ministers, have been to the NICU. And babies that were born weeks as he was born, uh, well, 20, 29 weeks, for whatever reason, complications and things like that happen and they don't survive. We always trust the Lord. We don't question God or ask God why. We even told God with... With mighty Evan, God, it's your will. Your will is for life, and we claim it. Even doctors were not giving him good reports at that time. We had a moment to doubt. But because of a praying church, come on. Because of family that knows and trusts God. Even though doubt came in like on a balloon... I believe one of God's angels shot that balloon with an arrow and got rid of doubt in our life. So now we walk by faith stronger now than ever. Even though we're still in the valley. Come on. We're not making our home in that valley. We're not going to stay in that valley. And the greatest testimony we as pastors and as friends of the ministry can teach and train a church he said, don't get settled where you are. Keep moving forward. Because God is going to turn what may seem ugly into something that's so beautiful. Something that may seem as it being ashes turned into beauty. That's the kind of God we serve. And if you saw any pictures of this boy as a little baby, you know we were praying for miracles because he was covered head to toe in hair and he didn't look like what he looks like today. But he's blessed. Stretch your hands. Father Evan represents babies all around the world. And we are a church that represents the miracle working power of God. And Lord, today we anoint in the name of Jesus Eloy as the head of his house. Thank you for Tiffany. We thank you, Lord, that you have healed her. She is moving closer and closer and closer to the testimony of the victory of the Lord. And Lord, we anoint Evan Richard Sarducci. We declare that today he is stronger than ever. His steps have been ordered even as he's taking them baby steps. As he continues to reach, Lord, towards his natural father and natural mama and nana and everyone that loves him, Lord, may he continue to reach to you. For we know that there's no junior spirit, there's no baby spirit, but the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells in this son. There will be a day he has to make a decision to say yes to you, to be baptized, and to follow your grace. So that I pray now for his life and what he has to give to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We bless his one year 
And may one year become a hundred years. In Jesus' name, amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Yeah. He's already starting to push and walk a little bit. I told Kim, I said, man, you know, that's good. But that's when the spankings come. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All the children, let me pray over them. Why don't y'all come up right now so I can bless y'all and, and release God's love and God's favor on you. Safira, you're here today. You are our neighbor. There should never be an excuse why you can't be at church. You're with us. You live, us. You live so close to us. We love you. She went to the barbecue shop, and Dad gave her a sausage taco. And she said, ooh, now I'm going to church. So keep on going every Thursday for that sausage taco, okay, for free. Who? Tia Louis? No, Theo. Oh, Theo Louis, yes. She said that you were actually the great inspiration for her to come back to church. So she gave up Sunday cartoons to come to church. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Lord, we call these children hungry for you, thirsty for you, and they represent children all around the world, our grandchildren, our, 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 our children. Even if our child is 30, 40, 50 years old, Lord, they're our children. They represent your children. So, Lord, we declare the blessing upon them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, we call you blessed. All right, Noah, I like your shirt. Awesome, awesome, awesome. God is so good. How, while they're leaving, why don't we all stand together? Let's stretch just a bit. We're turning to the book of Daniel this morning. Daniel chapter 9. And we're going to be reading just a few verses in the book of Daniel chapter 9. And then we're going to go over a couple of other verses as we talk about how we should fast and pray today. Good Lord. Daniel chapter 2 in the first year of king and the reign of D D Daniel understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of God through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem then I set my face towards the Lord say that with me I set my face towards the Lord my turn. God to make request by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. Father, we honor your word. It is truth and it leads and guides us. I pray that the Holy Spirit open up our ears, our eyes of our understanding to be enlightened today about your word on our life as we lead and help lead others to the cross of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please take your seats this morning. We just read an outline um, a plan A strategy of getting an answer from the Lord. As a born again believer, we daily increase our spirituality, we mature in our spirits. 
daily. One of the very first things we learn as brand new Christians is how to communicate with our Father, right? How to thank Jesus for His sacrifice. How to invite the Holy Spirit to help and lead our life. At, at, at the very beginning of our Christian walk, many of us have been saved for many years. How many of you have been saved over 10 years? Let me see your hands. Saved, set free, born again. How about anyone been saved 15 and above? 20 and above? 30 and above? We have so many people here in the house that have been saved for quite some time. And just as you were saved 30 plus years ago, you look in the mirror, come on, and you're not the same looking guy you saw 30 years ago. Naturally, you change, correct? Naturally, we get older. Naturally, we get more fragile. Huh? Naturally, we become more um, selective, I guess. Naturally, it happens. You can't run from it. You, you, you can paint your hair and hide it, but it'll come back. Come on. Did you know in your spirit it works in reverse? As you grow in God, you don't get weaker, but you get stronger. Come on. When you grow in God more as a born-again believer, so even though... You look at that mirror being saved 30 years. Even though in the natural, you see, who is that man I'm looking at right now? You see what you see and what God sees on the inside. And you see a strong warrior. Come on. You see a prayer warrior. You see someone who can talk to God and have faith to move mountains. Come on. The natural, you see yourself all frail and small and, 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 and not strong at all, but in the spiritual. Come on, somebody. You see yourself mighty in God. Daniel is teaching us at a very old age, 80 plus, how strong he is in his spirit. How we as believers, even growing in our age. Carla, would you tell me your age? Is that okay? You're 25. And that's today. Happy birthday, Carla. That's a big year. Amen. I mean, just think about it. In 75 more years, you'll be 100. But did you know you'll never be, ever, 24? <laughs> so sad, right? Every year, you're just going to get older and older. You can't stop it. You can tell people you're 20. But sooner or later, everyone's going to know how old you are. Come on. But in your spirit, as you became born again, you become a whole lot stronger. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, not, not older in spirit because there's no age in spirit. You become stronger in your spirit. 
Daniel is teaching us that it's not about what we see on the outside, but it's how we move things on the inside. Because at 80 years of age, he should be retired. He should be applauding all the youngins. Come on. But he is the one man who is most sought of in that day. Come on, somebody. And it wasn't because of his olden age, but it was because of his strength on the inside. So he teaches us the power of prayer. Someone say there's power in prayer. We're going to learn four things here about our prayer life. The first we learn, if you're taking notes, or those that are watching around the world, is that Daniel was motivated to pray as he was reading the Word. He was being rooted in the Scripture. Did you know the more you read, the more you want to talk to God? Come on. And the more you read and the more you talk to God, no longer is it you talking, but it's the word of God talking through you. Come on. And now God is not just hearing you, but he's hearing his word. Come on. That the Bible says cannot return void. That God watches over his word to perform its very acts. So Daniel was Rooted in the word, he was praying the word of God. Number two, he, it's being revealed that he is confessing some areas in his life and in the children of God's life that need a realm of repentance, that need, they need to turn from their wicked ways. He had a heart check. You know what prayer does? Prayer searches within and it makes us check ourselves within. When we communicate with God, we are entering into the most holies of holies. We've corrected our children. Our children, I love them. And God has placed them in my life and in my wife's lives for, for a purpose. And we've corrected them even at the dinner table. They, you know, they sit down hungry, and they see that food, and they know that food is fixing to be very delicious, and they just want to devour that food, but they got to wait for daddy. Come on. Daddy sits down. Daddy prays. We eat. Come on. We don't nitpick. We don't slice them on the side. Come on, somebody. I might be a little old school, but that's how I'm teaching my children. So there one day we say, you know what? Let's have one of our children pray. I'm not going to tell you who it was, but they're here today. They're wearing the blue shirt. <laughs> that food was so good. Jesus, take it for the food. Amen. He grabbed that knife and that fork. <clears throat> Hold up now. You said pray, I prayed. When we pray, we step into the most holy of holies, even if it's over your food. So I had to kind of teach them that day how to fast. How to pray. Now, God's not necessarily asking for your quantity of prayer. He's not asking for you to give him hours and hours and hours of prayer. Now, if you're doing that, awesome. Keep doing it. But God is looking for the quality of your prayer. The heartfelt movement of your prayer. 
So Daniel was giving the introduction about the power of prayer and how it was given by the entrance of the word. When we read God's word more, even if it's online, even if it's a scripture that's sent by a friend and you read God's word, his word um, compels you to start talking to him. And then you begin to pray. And after you begin to pray, it also brings a revealed area in your life that we are all sinners falling short of the glory of God, that we all need grace and we all need the mercy of God. And he begins to speak to us. And the Holy Spirit doesn't condemn us of our sin. He convicts us and he tells us, come on, repent of that. Don't go to that again. Ask God to forgive you, show you a greater and a better way. When you pray, God begins to reveal some things in you that need to change. And you begin to make confession to him. Third, we, re, we, we, we understand that he responds in supplication. He does something. We are to humble ourselves and ask the Lord. Not demand of the Lord. We become demanding as people when it doesn't happen or go our way. Huh? Is there anybody else like that in the house or just the pastor? Huh? When things don't go our way, we become very demanding. Come on. But when we enter into the room of prayer, we are not to demand as if God owes us something. Come on. See, that mentality that people have around the world that God owes you something, therefore you can come into his presence and demand a blessing. Demand a miracle. I've had people tell me when they come for prayer, I've been serving God for 30 years. He owes me this miracle. My wife needs to be healed. My flesh wants to tell them if I had a zipper, I would zip your mouth. But my spirit says they need guidance. They've just been praying wrong. They just need a little turn. It's not a big one. It's just a little turn. And they'll be in the right path for the miracle. In this book, we've learned that when we pray, we are praying to receive answers. Praying to receive answers. Daniel needed an answer. So Daniel sought the Lord. However, when we are praying and seeking an answer... We have to know in our mind and in our heart that it is God's time, not our time. Let me compare our time to God's time. A thousand years is as a day for the Lord. Come on. Pastor. Are you telling me that I have to wait and wait and wait for this miracle? I'm telling you that it's God's timing. We, Eloy, Pastor Kim, can easily ask God, God, how 
I have a question. Um, your daughter, Tiffany, has been fighting this battle, has been fighting this disease that you covered on the cross. Why has it taken a year to wake up some doctors to bring in this prescribed medication that's going to boost her muscular system and bring her out of a paralytic state to a moving state. I can ask God those questions. My timing would be have the baby, rejoice. Four days later, come home. Two weeks later, go to work. Come on. A year later, playing a big old pachanga, having everybody there, a piñata and candies and cake and presents and gifts. But that's my timing. And my ways are not God's ways. His thoughts are a whole lot higher than our thoughts. Through this, our prayer life has increased. And it hasn't increased just because we're in a valley. Because our prayer life had always been increasing. But this kind of increase has brought a, 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 a peace in us. Knowing that it's not our timing, it's God's timing. So we wake up not afraid to look at our phone, not afraid to get an email. Come on, somebody. Not to get a call from the doctor. We don't go to this hospital in fear. Come on. Thinking, what are we fixing to see? What are we going to expect? Because we have that peace. Knowing it's God's timing. And it only happens through prayer. Now, God wants to increase our prayer life with another tool that's called fasting. Someone say fasting. Now, if we look up the word fast in the Webster's Dictionary, it will define itself as a, a, uh, um, uh, a removal or, 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 or uh, you, you just don't, uh, you don't, you, you keep yourself from uh, eating naturally. Uh, you're fasting naturally. You don't eat. Uh, that's the world's uh, definition. Um, Jesus also had definitions of fasting. I want us to go there, please, to Matthew chapter 6. Are we learning something this morning about prayer? Are we learning something this morning about an extra tool that God gives us called fasting? Now, I almost did it this morning. I should have, but I just didn't. I wanted to bring a table in here, and I wanted to give one of the brothers a piece of board, a screw, and a regular screwdriver. And I wanted him to get busy screwing that screw into the board, into the, into the, into the you know, two by four with the regular screwdriver. How many have ever used a screwdriver before? Come on. Nowadays, they're ancient. Because if you don't own a power tool, well, yes, on time with power tools. Come on. I was building something for some trash cans, a little case there, because the dogs always tip them over. I said, okay. I'm going to go over there and give me some free pallets. 
I'm going to take off the boards. I'm going to sand them down a little bit, and I'm going to make me a little cage of those free pallets. It's going to cost me a cent. Praise the Lord. I got about 50 minutes right now to spare. I'm going to do it, and I did it. While I was doing it, man, it's so easy. And then, the, oh, my battery. I lent it to my dad. Oh, he wasted my battery putting on that air condition. Where's my charger? Oh, it's in my truck. No, oh, my truck is over there. It's on the side of the church. I'm behind my house. Ah, oh, come on. Take more steps. Praise the Lord. So I go get that charger. I go plug up that charger. It needs a full 30 minutes of charge. So I could just sit there, Lewis, and wait for that charger to charge, and I can go do something else, or I could take out my handy-dandy screwdriver. Come on, somebody. Now, sure, I'd, I'd, I'd want to just use the electric, right, or the, the, the power tool. Very easy. Someone said, well, what about your extra battery? I couldn't find it. It was probably at the barbecue shop or something. God gives you tools. And he gives you tools for the purpose to build your relationship with him so that people see the masterpiece of your relationship with him come on so when I'm praying Pastor Kim for Tiffany you've used a screwdriver before You get it in there, whoo, and then you got 20 more to go, whoo, come on. About the fifth one, your hand is already going like this, and it's saying it's time for a water break. You need a break. Chill out a little bit so you can get some strength to do it some more while that battery's charging. Come on. So once my hand is hurting, that doesn't mean we got to stop praying. Then I begin to charge myself up in the Holy Ghost. Come on. I begin to pray in an unknown tongue. Come on. I begin to quote the word. Come on. So God gives us tools so we can continue to use these tools in every area of our life. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, if you're there, say, I'm there. He says in chapter 6, it's going to be on the screen for you also. Starting with verse number uh, 16. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, tell your neighbor, that's you. When you fast, I love this because in my Bible, the words are colored in what? Red. Is that red in your Bible? Those are the red, the, the red words of Jesus Christ. So who's talking to me? Who's talking to you? Jesus is saying, if you fast, is that what he said? No, he didn't say if. When it becomes convenient for you and you got extra time and your tummy's extra full so you don't have to eat for lunch, come on, because you had a big breakfast. No, I didn't say that. Come on. So Jesus is not requesting. He is telling us when we fast. So as a believer, we should be following what the Lord asks of us. 
And he says, now don't be like the hypocrites who appear in the marketplace or at church or wherever. And the word is used here, the New King James Version, disfigure, meaning they look so weak that people know they have not been eating but been praying. And so people know they are fasting. They're spending time with God. Jesus said, don't be like those people. But you, when you fast, someone say, when I fast. He said, anoint your head. Come on, Jesus is on my mind. Anoint your head. Wash your face. Glory to God. So that you do not appear to men to be fasting. Because no man needs to know what you're doing in the spirit. Because you're not talking to a man in the spirit. Come on, somebody. But you are communicating to the heavenly God who is our heavenly father, who is in the spirit. But to your father, pray and fast in the secret place. And your father who is sees in the secret will also reward you openly. You see, these Pharisees were seeking an open acknowledgement of their ministry in God. And if there's any preachers or teachers, evangelists or ministers that are viewing around the world, and as you get this, if we ever seek the applaud of people, then we are doing it for the wrong reasons, and God calls us a hypocrite. Because we are not here to be a man pleaser, but to be a heavenly God pleaser. So when we pray and when we fast, fast, we give up a natural food system that nourishes and strengthens and helps our body. We give it up just for a time so that we can totally focus on God. So why do we fast? First of all, we fast because Jesus told us to. And fasting and praying is an act of obedience. Amen? And everywhere I read in the Bible, and I've read it from cover to the index, all the way through the maps in the back, I find out that children who are obedient are blessed of the Lord. Come on. So if Jesus is telling us what we need to be doing, then we ought to be following through obedience the next step, the extra tool of fasting. I've heard people at one time say, well, man, I missed lunch. I can't believe I was working through I missed lunch. Uh, I'll, I'll counter fast. Don't work like that. You may have forgot to have a lunch hour and you forgot to eat, but that doesn't mean you were spending time in the Lord. So when we pray and we fast, we are dedicating our time to God. Daniel in Daniel chapter 9, that was his supplication. That was him doing something. I'm not just going to pray, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put my body into subject. Come on, somebody. I'm going to put my body on hold and say, natural self, flesh, sit down. Spirit of the living God, rise up inside of me. Because at most times, if you were like me growing up in a very... Um, Blessed, healthy environment at home. We ate very good, still do. Thank you, Jesus. God were to call us to fast when I was a young person and I saw mamas and daddies cooking, it would be a great challenge because I'd want that food. Come on, somebody. So the obedience in our life as a believer, to fast and to say, 
I'm just not going to be at the dinner table today. I'm going to spend some time with God. You then are growing in the tools of God and becoming stronger in Him. So why do we fast? We fast because it's in obedience to God. Number two, we fast to demonstrate our total dependence on God. We are totally dependent on God. James 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He then will lift you up. When we fast and give up some things in our life, we are lifting up Jesus Christ. And in return, we are becoming humbled. And then the Lord lifts us up. In other words, when we feel we're a little weak, he picks us up. When we feel that I can't go on, I can't go on, I, I, I can't pray another year. For Tiffany, I cannot pray another. You know what the Holy Spirit does because you've been fasting, you've been praying, he picks you up. And he said, you'll go 10 years if I want you to. And I will keep her and I will keep you strong. Come on. So our time in prayer and fasting is our time to be totally dependent on the Lord. You know the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 do not, don't you know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. That everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body. There it is. I discipline my body and I bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Paul was saying, we are all running. But we're not all going to receive the same reward. But for those that endure and put their their, their body under subject, their natural self, put their flesh on hold and say, my spirit is leading. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is going to receive a reward that is not perishable. Why do we fast? We fast to demonstrate repentance from our sin. Sackcloth and ash, what Daniel 9 talks about. Daniel made request of the Lord by supplication through fasting with sackcloth and ash. The sackcloth was made of black goat hair. It was very uneasy to wear. You wouldn't, it wasn't the robe. Um, it wasn't the in robe. If you wore sackcloth, it was because you were in a time of mourning. You were in a time of desperate need. You became poor. It wasn't the style back then. But we read in the Bible in the old and even in the new that people would, 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 would put that sackcloth over them as a, as a remembrance and a re remembrance of, of, of praying and repenting for your sin. So Daniel not only fasted, but he put that coat of sackcloth on him, covered himself up, and he sat in ash. And the word ash here in the Bible is the representation of rubble, of what's been destroyed. And that is what his people were. They were destroyed. They were rubble. A house that was built was burnt and now left to ashes. And here is Daniel through fasting, sitting in ash, covered in humility, repenting of his sin and the sins of the children of God, making requests 
for the mercy of God. Why do we fast? Because we need to repent. If you read the book of Jonah, we won't go there for the sake of time. Chapter 3, verses 5 and 10. You know that Jonah was sent to Nineveh, right? To talk to the Ninevites. God told Jonah to tell those Ninevites that, that he was going to destroy their entire population. So Jonah told the king, God is going to destroy you. Everything you own, you are no longer going to be living on this earth because of all your sin. The Bible says, and you can read it for yourself in Jonah, the king had a meeting. He called all his people and he said, we're going to be fasting. We're going to be praying. Here's some sinners. Come on, somebody. But they recognized the man of God. They recognized that this was from God. They understood that they were not living for God and that they needed to do something so that God's grace and God's mercy would be able to be upon them. Jonah never talked about God's forgiveness. Jonah never talked about them doing what they did. He didn't say, God is going to destroy you, but if you pray and if you fast and if you do all this, then God might have mercy on you. No, Jonah went with the word of the Lord and he said, you're going to die because of your sin. Something stirred up, kind of like when we were sinners. Come on, bound for hell, right? Something stirred up in us, someone, some preacher, some television show, some radio broadcast, a mama, a grandmama, a brother, a sister, a teacher, a coach. Somehow, something woke up in us, put a mirror in front of us, and we saw only sin. And I said to myself, no longer do I want to sin. No longer do I need to sin. I need a Savior. Amen. And I accepted Christ. And his mercy came upon me. And no longer, listen, no longer does God see me as a sinner, but he sees the blood of the Savior. Hallelujah. That's what he sees, the atoning blood. So Jonah told the Ninevites, and I'm closing. He said, you're going to die because of your sin. The king called everybody. He said, listen, I don't really know how to pray, but I, I feel that we need to pray. So let's all pray. You know what? Let's take it a far step. Let's even fast. Let's not eat nothing. You know what? Bring all the sackcloths. Make sackcloths. We're going to cover ourselves. Here's a king who lived in the prosperity of the wealth of the land. And here he is putting on poverty. He's saying, you know what? Money can't buy my salvation. Money can't buy my healing. Come on. Money can't buy my happiness. Money can't buy my children. Money can't buy my job. Money can't give me life eternal. He said, but what can is my repentance of, of, of asking God to forgive me? And he puts on that sackcloth. And after they're praying, after they're fasting, he gets up and he says, you know what? Even our cattle, even our sheep, uh, even our, 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 our livestock put, ass, put, put, put a, a sackcloth on them. Don't even feed them. Come on, somebody. He took it to another level. Mm. Nobody ate. Everybody was humbled. And God saw their heart. That they did it out of sincerity. Not out of blasphemy. And you know what God did? God sent word that they were going to be destroyed. You know what God did? God preserved them. Revival took place. Come on. Why do we fast? We fast because it demonstrates a, repent, a repentance in our life. We fast because it causes us to be totally dependent 
on God. We fast because that is what Jesus told us to do. Close your Bibles and close your notebooks. As a leader and pastor of this church, I can only encourage you to follow the ways of the Lord. Fasting is not just for a minister. It is for the believer. Jesus, he was talking to his disciples who became apostles, who continued to give the instruction of the Lord Jesus Christ to their followers who became leaders, parents, teachers, grandparents, and so forth. So fasting is for all of us. But it has to be something that's dealt with in your heart. And you have to do it with a sincere heart. And there's no need to go tell anybody. It's just between you and God. God sees the heart. Remember he says, if you do it in private, I'll, I'll openly reward you. In other words, don't seek the approval of man. Only seek me and I will openly reward you. The fruit of a born again believer is based upon the work they do in the field. Come on. Based upon our work in Christ is the fruit we have. Jesus said fast. Daniel gave us a clear directive because when he prayed, he saw a nation, he saw a people who were still needing help. And he came before the Lord and he asked for forgiveness. But he didn't just pray. He put everything else on hold and he became totally dependent on God. He confessed and repented of his sin and the sins of the people. And he wore sackcloth and sat in ash as a reminder that he is nothing without God and that he needs God in his life more today than ever. I want to pray over you right now. If you want a closer and deeper walk with the Lord, just where you are, I want you to stand. You want a closer and deeper. You've never um, fasted. You've never um, stepped into different levels. You, you, you've been okay. You've been, you've been where you are and you're, you're, you're reading the word, you're praying, you're coming to church, you're giving, you're worshiping, you're praying, you're even fasting here and there, but you just want a, a greater intimacy with God. I'm going to stand because I want a greater intimacy with God. I'm going to pray right now that God begin to stir some things up right now in you. That when you step into the presence of God, that um, the word will become more real in you that 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 it'll it'll breathe and, and 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 have direction for you to go and do as the Lord would please you to do so Lord as your church as your family here we come humbly Lord Lord we come with a repentive heart for we know that even though you sent your Savior Jesus who died on that cross for me and for others and for our family and for our co-workers Lord I have areas in life that we need to totally surrender so Lord we surrender them to you with our whole heart Lord lead me in these times that we commit to you as we pray and as we fast 
privately. Cause a hunger, Lord, uh, to be birthed and, 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 and bring us uh, an appetite, Lord, to, 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 to do more and, 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 and have more in you. Lord, you see all that are here and you see all that, that desire a closer walk with you. I pray that people leave this service knowing that you are the God of, 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 of love and the God that wants to see us grow more and more in love with you. So you help us by your spirit. Thank you for teaching us this morning. Thank you for allowing us to open up the book of Daniel that encourages us to use the tools of prayer and fasting. I pray this day is a new day for all of us as we see the Lord and seek the Lord in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah and hallelujah. So be it, church, amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Don't, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Praise him. Come on up. Don't be surprised, you know. Uh, just, just, you know, you have some specific meetings with the Lord. If you ever want to come pray at the church, the church is always open between, you know, 7 a.m. to about 7 p.m. I always have it open for 12 hours. And, and, and uh, you know, it's just silent in here, but people are here sometimes praying or, or they're not or they're working, you know, serving. But just, I want you to just be open to come or, or maybe your own home. Just, just be open to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. Well, it was a powerful message on prayer and fasting. I feel a release that we are, we are, whoo, we are right on track. Thank you, Jesus. Right on track with Daniel chapter 9. And we're just on that first part. We're still got to talk about the interpretation of that dream. Praise the Lord. Oh, God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Ushers, come on up. Let's, let's end this service as we close with a dedicated offering for the Lord. Now, you heard Pastor Kim talk about next Sunday. Next Sunday, we're going to be dedicating a world mission offering. And we dedicate that world mission offering. Uh, your pastors, they, they, they are blessed to be a part of uh, John Hagee ministry. And as they continue to reach out to Israel, we are part of a great, 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 great uh, church family that shares and, and loves and supports Israel. Amen. And so our missions offering will be dedicated for the mission field. And we're just thanking the Lord for what he's doing. Hallelujah. And what he continues to do. Thank you, Jesus. And so that's next week. I want you to gear for that week and ask the Lord, what is my part? Put it in my heart. Today, as we know, believers, we sow and we thank the Lord for gifts of sacrifice. Because many of us, it's a sacrifice to give. Jesus watches all things. Remember that woman with the, with the two mites? It was a sacrifice for her to give, but she gave out of faith. And Jesus taught a whole lesson about giving. We as believers understand that there's power in obedience. So as we give his tithe unto him, God honors our obedience. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the blessing of the Lord among this seed. In the name of Jesus, and everyone said amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Come and sow and, and, and believe with us supernaturally. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you're faithful. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done. As it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. That everything that happens, that everything. Let everything that happens
words of faith, Lord, we know that this is the blessing of the Lord among your people, among your kingdom. And Lord, we know that it is on fertile ground. Therefore, it reaps on a great harvest. So Lord, we declare this seed as it reaches the world. Lord, it preaches, it teaches, it, it continues to grow strong in the lives of your people. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said amen, amen, amen. Well, what a blessing. Hallelujah. God is good. What a blessing. Today we have Las Palmas at 3 o'clock, 7 o'clock we have our men's Bible study. And then next Sunday we're going to be praying over all of our seniors, blessed time. And then also praying and blessing all of our veterans. So it's going to be great. So have a great, great, great afternoon. We will see you Wednesday at 6.30. To God be the glory. Amen. Have a wonderful day. God bless everybody. And let's have a spirit-filled week in Jesus' name. He knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make.